We're good. Okay. Thanks. I uh, call to order the uh, Monday, May 3rd, uh, Volunteer Firefighters Pension Committee. And I believe we have a quorum today. So, uh, and then did you include minutes on here as well? Yep. And the minutes are from February 1st of this year. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of February 1st? So moved. Second. The motion has been made by Tom Fitzpatrick, seconded by Mike O'Neill. You guys want a second to review them? If not, all those in favor of approving the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay. And then we've got Chris on the phone or on the Zoom. Uh, report of the investment management consultant. Great. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon again, everyone. I will, Michael, try like we did in our previous session here, if that's okay. Um, work off the deck and then I can stop sharing and, and transition over to Lisa and, and uh, their portion, if that makes sense for folks. Yeah, um, that's it, Chris, okay. we got it. Everyone, everyone see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. All right, so I, I'll, we'll be quick on the update to the markets. We've got a, a couple of folks who've heard this story already, but in fairness, we've got a couple who not just yet, but um, uh, very quickly, uh, for, for those folks, we, we did undertake a rebranding effort uh, back about a month or so ago, as you see here indicated on the page. We had shared some of that information with, with Mike and Gary, just as a, a front running that. Um, simply a rebranding effort to, to kind of align with our, our, our aspirations to uh, uh, have more of a national footprint, ultimately. So... Uh, you see there some of the, the bona fides uh, in terms of assets and, and, and some of the protocols around uh, uh, connecting into us. Importantly, you see at the bottom of the page, there are absolutely no changes to the firm, the team, the ownership, uh, certainly how we consult um, the volunteer firefighter plan uh, uh, and the type of things, uh, investment recommendations and ideas we bring. All of that is absolutely identical and unchanged and, and, and unaffected by the rebranding and uh, we'd be remiss uh, uh, not thanking you for your for your trust and confidence. Um, uh, so we do that uh, again here. Um, and with that, we'll transition over quickly. Hit a couple of highlights for you on capital markets um, thematically in the first quarter. Uh, kind of more of the same. And I say that meaning that you see there we highlight the American Rescue Plan Act and some of its details in the upper right hand corner of the page. And you'll remember it was about 15 months or so ago when uh, the authority stepped in and really an unprecedented way with stimulus. That stimulus, you'll remember, started with uh, the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates to zero, introducing all kinds of liquidity programs across the markets to keep markets functioning, um, and then was joined by fiscal stimulus out of Washington. You'll remember uh, most prominently and initially the CARES Act. Um, and some of the, uh, uh, the stimulus there, and it's been followed more recently by more of the same on both fronts. And uh, the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, you'll see it's, uh, as mentioned, it's, it's constituent parts in the upper right-hand corner of the page here. Um, lots of those monies directed to the individuals and consumers, and uh, you're certainly seeing uh, that kind of uh, encourage spending and, and again, keep the economy on somewhat of an even keel. Uh, hopefully, as we continue to transition to, uh, you know, normality, if you will, um, and, and more steady economic growth later this year. Uh, interest rates and, and inflation expectations, kind of uh, uh, not a surprise to us, given where we are in the cycle and with all that stimulus have trended a bit higher. You see in the lower left-hand corner of the page, some of those details while they are higher, they're not worrisome uh, from our standpoint and, and you know, something to monitor, but not to get too uh, nervous about just yet. Um, and then the other interesting thing under the hood, and it is a admittedly pretty nuanced um, concept, but one that's worth highlighting, you'll see in the lower right hand corner of the page, um, across global equity markets, the way return streams have kind of evolved through time. What was, again, about a year ago, uh, an equity market anyways, that was dominated by 
the large tech names here in the US with everything else playing catch up has more recently been a much broader market. And by that, we mean you're seeing good returns in small cap names, you're seeing good returns in, in the value segments of the markets, things like financials and industrials and the like um, that often do well early in cycles. And again, that return pattern, a broadening return pattern, oftentimes historically is signified the beginning of a, of a new uptrend in economic activity. So we're encouraged by that and, and we'll see how that pans out. Um, uh, returns have been pretty darn splendid. So we've got a lot of them cataloged here on, on the page. And you'll note um, for the quarter, I'll kind of start uh, in the middle of the page here. For the quarter, you positive equity returns, not exclusively so, but by and large, right? We've had a bit higher interest rates, which put some pressure on bond prices over the last quarter. When you shift your focus out, for example, to the last year, you see just the magnitude of some of these returns. Um, so one year, the s and is up 56% in March. Um, small capitalization stocks, value stocks, growth stocks, international equities, really, we won't go through all of those, but you see some pretty darn uh, spectacular returns. And the fixed income markets as well have been positive, not generally to the same extent. The broad markets are up just a touch. Um, but positive nonetheless. So really a pretty remarkable return pattern if you think about it, uh, given the challenges that we've all faced as it relates to the pandemic. And again, the tailwinds being all of that stimulus that we just talked about and, and cataloged, and then moreover, joined more recently, of, of course, by some of the gains being made with, um, with vaccination distribution. Clearly, uh, uh, investors are discounting this idea that in the back half of this year and into 2022, we should start to see more consistent uh, economic growth, uh, or maybe first here in the U.S., but then followed not too longer thereafter uh, by other uh, regions of the world. Um, I am going to, with that, uh, uh, skip a lot of this other detail here. We've kind of hit the highlights of that and then jump right into the portfolio. Um, so you do see here um, um, a couple of things. Uh, uh, the allocation construct at the end of March. So you see about $1.8 million in the firefighter plan. Um, the bulk of it, as you know, as you see in the exhibit, is still focused on more conservative fixed income. And that's a byproduct, you'll remember, of uh, um, what we're trying to achieve over time in terms of the, the crediting rate back to the, to the firefighters, to the, to the participants. And Michael detail some of that uh, information momentarily. Um, the one thing we'll do here, and it's, uh, you'll, you'll see noted that the portfolio, because equities have so, done so very well versus fixed income, we are a little overweight equity versus target. So if everyone can kind of use domestic equity, for example, right? We've got a standing target of 17%, but equities have done so well, they're actually 20% of the total today. Um, a little bit of a similar, relation, similar relationship on, on, on international equity. Um, so uh, uh, we'll kind of, we'll work with Mike, um, to rebalance and, 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 and Pam and Lisa to rebalance the portfolio back to those standing targets, which we continue to think are appropriate, um, the 75% uh, uh, percent fixed income and, and then 25% in global equities. So again, I don't know that that's an action item per se, just something to make the committee aware of because we're obviously operating uh, you know, well within the confines of the policy statement. Uh, and kind of the the administerial, if you will, um, uh, onus that you've, you've put on us to uh, run those balances and, and, and stay uh, true to those targets. Um, so the only other thing I would mention on this page that um, uh, we'd like to make the committee aware of, we would like to rotate the international equity to a higher conviction manager available on the Prudential platform. And we've been working with Lisa and her counterparts to work through the analysis and due diligence there. So we have used PICTAV for a, 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 an extended period of time. You'll see in a minute, uh, their performance has been decent. 
Um, but we do have, by virtue of uh, the analysis of our research group, a higher conviction name in the space that we'd like to swap out and, and uh, remove PICTE in favor for, and that's the, the American Fund Euro-Pacific Growth Strategy, which is uh, really one of the flagship offerings available in the international equity arena and we think would well serve um, the plan uh, on a go-forward basis. Um, it has a little bit of a broader perspective in terms of its ability to use things like emerging market equities, which there are some very interesting opportunities in right now, um, and just a broader investing footprint. So um, again, I think oh, through time, you've given us kind of that wherewithal to work with Mike, as long as we're with beholden to our target weights and the policy statement to periodically you know, swap out managers in favor of another. So those would be the two items. Uh, Can I? Um, um, just sure. a quick question: Is it sure. the um, what's what's driving the the? I hate to say in the imbalance, but um, is it that is it that equity prices are going up, and that's what's bringing it out of out of whack, or is it yeah, a combination exactly of the equity prices and the fixed income? Yep, so your intuition spot on. Equities have done much, much better than fixed income, right? So as those asset classes grow disproportionately, the equities by doing much better grow as a portion of the total, right? Where the fixed income returns have been a bit more modest. So yes, it's a, absolutely and solely a byproduct of, of just what's going on in markets and those relative return streams and patterns. So you know, our discipline, Tom, right? Just going back here to the... Um, uh, uh, where the heck, here we go. So I'm sorry. Here we go. Uh, just going back to the exhibit here, right? So we're about what 4.4 percent underweight fixed income versus right now. Um, so right, the natural discipline is to restore that uh, uh, that that imbalance and, and bring us back actually, to, you know, spot on to target. So that an easy action for us to undertake with the potential folks. Um, but to answer your question, yes, that's what it is. It's, it's the return streams have just been uh, that much different. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then the other quite, I mean, the other part of it was, it, are, are the fixed income um, investments that we're in, are those, you know, they're not, the, the performance of those, is that, is that weak? Yeah, so yeah, that it, it allows for the equities to, to capture a bigger portion of the portfolio? Uh, it's a great question. Let's, let's, let me try to answer it for you with a couple of data points, if I could. Let me start quickly on this next page, just to give you the necessary perspective at the portfolio level. You'll see performance down here, two thirds of the way down the page. Uh, so a, you know, it, it writes somewhat of a quarter for the fund. We talked about interest rates were higher in the first three months of the year. That's going to be a headwind for fixed income returns, as you may all remember. The managers did offer a little bit of relative protection versus the benchmark. Um, but shift your attention to the one-year number, and you'll see, Tom, to answer your question in a minute, we'll look at a couple of the particular manager returns. Um, there was a lot of value add from your active managers over the last year, right? So you planned, the fund was up almost 21% for the one year period ending in March, obviously well outpacing our index. Um, and that incremental return here you see came a little bit from the allocation and the overweight to equities, but you'll see, let me shift to it, pretty big outperformance to your question from some of your managers. So, um, uh, Look in the one year column here, the broad fixed income markets, our benchmark were up less than 1% over the last year, right? You see this the 0.7 there, what we call 70 basis points. The prudential strategy was up 7, uh, 700%, 7 excuse me, above that, right? 7.7%. Look at your BlackRock, your, your other manager of fixed income, up 14%, right? given their broader footprint. So both of your, uh, your anchor fixed income managers, you know, did exceptionally well uh, 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 last year. So um, I don't know if that helps or, or, or confuses. No, it does. 
it, you've got very good performance from your two fixed income managers. And that's generally been the case longer term as well as, yeah. as those who've sat in on these calls before. Um, so we're obviously, I'll go back just to, just to kind of uh, stamp it again, uh, an extraordinarily strong year for the fund, right? All things considered. Um, uh, with, with again, uh, just to kind of, uh, we'll work with Michael, uh, assuming there's no uh, objection to rebalance the portfolio a bit. And again, as I mentioned, to work the portfolio to a higher conviction international equity manager um, uh, in the Prudential lineup. So we'll take Picte out and, and, and put the Euro Pacific Growth Fund in and do the rebalancing. And then I think we'll be, we'll be in you know, perfect shape on a go forward basis. Uh, given our, our our kind of existing and best expectations around what may happen in the markets in the coming quarters. So let me stop sharing here uh, and see if folks had other questions for me before we uh, transition over to the Prudential folks. Chris, could you just talk a little bit about the uh, kind of the outlook for the uh, fixed income market and particularly the U.S. bonds, uh, government yeah. bonds, and then just what that what that pertains for the portfolio, and kind of how we're how we're situated now, or how what you know what we might have to do, you know, as as things change. Yeah. So we uh, so it's um, you know interest rates did move up a bit in 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 the first quarter, but they're still pretty darn low, right? Uh, you know, if you look where the ten year is today. Um, it versus history, it's, it's pretty darn low. And if you kind of do all the arithmetic, oftentimes in the past, total returns from fixed income, you know, they follow and trend pretty closely to those treasury rates. So let's call them today, uh, you know, 1.6% or thereabouts. Um, that makes a pretty good guidepost, right, going forward for what fixed income returns may be like. Um, near term anyways. Remember the response, but the, 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 the defense you have against those low base interest rates comes in the form of the active managers, right? So to Tom's immediately previous question, um, in an unsettled environment like we've had, you've seen both the financial strategy and the BlackRock strategy offer a lot in the way of incremental return. Um, and we think they're poised to continue to do that going forward, right? So the, the the, the, the response to, oh boy, interest rates are very low. We don't think we're gonna get a ton in terms of fixed income return um, is to be uh, uh, active with it, you know, and be willing to spend budget, active fee budget to do that, which we're doing in the program. And then the proof statement is again, um, <laughs> the magnitude of that outperformance, right? From both of those managers. Now, do I think that this year that BlackRock is gonna outperform the index by almost 14% again, probably not. Um, but that's, you know, a, a incremental return that the, that the fund has booked and now owns and is obviously on the favorable side of the ledger. So I think the short answer is Mike, right? I think we're, we're cognizant of, of where interest rates are, but the structure of your fixed income program gives us the comfort and those managers have the tools in their toolbox, if you will, to kind of eke out those you know uh, uh, incremental returns where where they see them, uh, and and that should kind of deflect us and get us through this period of low, very low interest rates. And then moreover, right, a quarter of the portfolios and equities where the total return prospects obviously are much higher, right? And that's the motivation for having those equities uh, in the program, as we see, right, with it. Uh, if you were to have 100% of the fixed income port, uh, of the portfolio last year and in indexed fixed income, you would have earned 70 basis points or about three quarters of 1%. But you had active managers in there. We had equities mixed in in a thoughtful kind of measured manner and the fund generated a 20% return, right? So that's, that's kind of the, you know, the metric and the, and, the, and the framework we're operating within. And I think it continues to be appropriate going forward. You know, for what it's worth. I don't know if that helped or not. Um, yeah. No. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't Any other have anything else for I, Chris. Mark or Harry. 
or anybody from Prudential. You guys are all good? We are all good. Do you want me to share a mic? Last time I think I just went right to my deck. Want me to do it that way? Yeah. Fine. Lisa, you're, you're up next. Okay. Terrific. Give me one second. Um, I haven't shared anything on Zoom in a while. We've been using Teams so often that I'm starting to forget how to share. Um, share screen. There it is right there in green. Well, first of all, good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to see you all. Can you see something called a plan summary that should be right in front of you right now? And Mike, for those of us yes, I can see it. that have uh, the agenda, is that attached to the bottom of Chris's presentation? Yes. Okay. I've got it. Yeah. If you go to, I, I put numbers in the upper right yep. hand corner. And so if you go and it actually, I'll give you the exact page number. VFD 58, it looks like. It's actually 62 because both, both plans are in the report. Right. So the fire starts on page uh, 62, 63. Gotcha. Got it. Right. Well, good afternoon again, everybody. My colleague Pam and I are, are happy to see you today. We won't really uh, beat the same drum here on the plan summary because Chris really already talked about the asset allocation and the investments. Um, just want to bring you up to date on where the plan is. We know that at the end of the quarter, March 31st, the assets in the plan were $1,810,000 and $1,810,394. And as of closing bell on Friday, it had increased to $1,844,506. So about a $34,000 increase over the last 90 days. Sorry, 30 days. My math is off today. My apologies, everybody. <laughs> um, as we look at the fund activity, there really wasn't much that happened this past quarter. And traditionally in the first quarter, there, there isn't in terms of deposits or receipts made into the plan. We're looking at this column here, the, the right column on the second line here, 1 1 to 331 2021. We started the quarter at $1,813,564. There was actually no activity in this plan, meaning no contributions were made in, no, no deposits, no, no receipts, and there were also no payments um, or disbursements made as well. So the only impact we had was a bit of market change, market value change here of about $3,100. And that's where we ended the quarter, as I mentioned earlier, at that 1.81 million. I always like to take a look back to see where we were a year ago and remember the crazy volatility we had last year. So between market increases and deposits into the plan, you know, we're up over $300,000, 350 or so this year from last year. Last year, we ended the first quarter at 1.49 million and we're up to 1.81 million. Again, as of today, 1.84. So any questions at all on the cash flow or receipts in and out? Pretty quiet quarter, which is pretty much the case the first quarter of every year. Um, and what I, what I usually do each quarter as well um, is put an informational piece in your materials. It is not a sales pitch. It's nothing anybody needs to take action on, but I usually try to find an article of interest to the committee that you can share more broadly with your employees, friends, family, neighbors. And one of the, um, one of the white papers that Prudential had released late last fall was about social security benefits and specifically what married couples need to know who are approaching retirement. And this is a nice article. It's about three pages long and it just gives people some tips and information on how to, how to think about social security before you need it, particularly if you're married and you have a spousal benefit. Um, perhaps delaying the, um, the benefit receipt from the higher earner. Those are some of the examples that, that they're giving you here. So you can feel free again, if you wanted to share these on a, on a bulletin board, Mike, on an intranet site, things like this, these are public, um, publicly published. So you could feel free to share this wherever you want or disperse it throughout the rest of the committee, anybody who may not be here tonight. Nice example here between Joe and Sue as well. So that's really it, not too, too much to share today. But certainly happy to answer any questions if you have them. Any questions for Lisa on the Prudential side? Actually, I can't see. 
If you can stop sharing, Lisa, there we go. Yep. Everybody good? Pretty self-explanatory on this? Yep, I'm good. I guess my question is, is BlackRock the old SAC capital? Who runs BlackRock? Do we know? I think, Mike, that's the, um, uh, BlackRock's the big New York shop. It's started by Larry Fink and Company. Oh, God, probably 25 years ago or so now, and has grown into what is well, they go back and forth with Vanguard a little bit, but what is the largest, you know, asset manager in the year, in the world? Uh, I think they have a T after their number, so they're in the trillions. So, gotcha. okay, a, a, a big New York-based money manager that's been around for a long, long time and has particularly good uh, expertise in fixed income investing. If that helps. Yep. Yeah, I just couldn't remember if Steve Cohen, what he changed his hedge fund oh uh, he's uh, uh they're actually a client of ours so the new firm is 0. 0.72 i think is that's it that, yeah. yeah 72 not black right? okay good any other questions as we're looking at this let me go back up to the agenda it's a lot of information in all this stuff <laughs> okay and did we go over net earnings? Come oh, why don't I, I'll cover that briefly. Uh, I'm gonna get my share going here. So just going back to, uh, to Chris's presentation. Uh, let's see. Um, so, if you were to go back to the plan document, there's a distribution every year to qualifying members of the fire department who are, who are in the plan. Um, there's two components. The first component is based on the returns for the year and it's the year ended March 31st. Um, so that's what, that's what makes uh, this report relevant for us. Um, the plan says that we are to look at the one-year return, that's this 20%. And for qualifying participants in the plan, we are to credit 2% uh, at a minimum up to 4%, depending on what this amount is. So as such, um, we will be crediting 4%. Um, once we get the, the fire department will provide a list of members who have had what they call a good year, which is based on their um, service to the department, the number of points earned and so forth. Um, I think we get that in late June or early July, uh, Mark would know. <clears throat> and then we will, we will go back into the records and credit each uh, member who has a good year with a 4% uh, earnings. Uh, the other thing, the other provision in the plan document is that for years like this one, where the earnings in the plan are more than 4%, there, the, the board can also, uh, also has the power to grant a special allocation. So we will be, once we get the list of uh, members earning a good year, we'll credit the 4% and then uh, we'll do some analysis and bring a presentation back to the August meeting um, to consider that special allocation. But basically what we do is there's a, so there's a $1.8 million in the fund. <clears throat> and part of that is allocated to specific participants in the plan. And part of it is just a general reserve within the plan. We, we uh, like to maintain that general reserve as sort of a, an overfunding if, if in the event that, uh, you know, market, market condition changes and we lose some market value. So determining what the special allocation should be is just kind of a function of looking at the, the total unallocated amount in the 1.8 million compared to the amount that's, that's allocated already in past years uh, to the members. So we'll bring that analysis back. This piece is, is, uh, doesn't require a vote. It's, uh, it's automatic, you know, again, under the, the terms of the plan, um, given the 20% uh, uh, return for the year, we will credit 
um, all the qualifying members with a 4% um, income for the year. Michael, this is Mark. I just sent that report to Miguel uh, this afternoon. I have the numbers for this past year. Oh, you do? Good. Yep. Fantastic. So that's in already. Yep. So Mark, we will not have, uh, because there's a special allocation, we won't have statements until after that August meeting. That's fine. Yeah, that, that's usual time frame. But yeah. I just want to make sure you add the information as quickly as possible. Good. Fantastic. Okay. Anything else for that? Thank you, Mark, for that question. Um, distributions. Any old business? I, did the distributions made on the first quarter? If there's none, do you have to have to make an explanation on that, Mike, at all? Nope. Just to, those are included just for the committee's information. Okay. And there were there were none in the first quarter. Okay. No, and no old business. No. Nope. No new business for anybody. Uh, Claudia, did you introduce? Yeah, I know you said your name, but did you say you've taken over your role as uh, HR? for us? Okay. So everybody knows. I guess that would be the only new business. Tom Fitzpatrick is somewhat new. I don't know. You weren't on in February, were you, Tom? No, I was here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. I can't remember That's when okay. the appointment was made. <laughs> okay. No old business, no new business. All those in favor of uh, adjourning? Signified by or motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Any abstentions on that? Okay. We're adjourned. Great. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Take care, everybody. Stay well. Yep. See you.